I was looking through the Brawlhalla power rankings, as I casually do, and noticed that the top power ranking of players was generally unchanged for a while. That was until we saw our first new online generation of player, or as I like to just call him, a new gen player. You see this top 8 here? It looks pretty normal right back in that time. That is, except for one thing. One of these names does not match with the rest of them. And, uh, maybe oh, I'm glad to see Stingray back on uh, Black Knight. Yeah, me too. Okay, opening up strong with the Lance as well. And he, had, he had a great... <gasps> did he did it again! Oh! oh, oh, oh. literally ran for his life I was for about that recovery. to reference oh, it. Oh, there it is! Zero he did death. it again! Zero to death! Stingray, zero to death against Sandstorm oh. in a tournament! Unbelievable! And he had Sandstorm. I actually made a video on Stingray before, but I hated it, so I took it down. And on top of the many interesting things to talk about for Stingray, one of the largest ones goes pretty much unnoticed. But that was until Impala won the World Championship. person who kickstarted my career in 2020 um, and helped me become the player who, who's kind of like standing here today, um, Stingray, who's, who's out there. Not only is it like incredibly hard to break into the top 8 of any fighting game, like how I mentioned with the PR rankings in the beginning of the video, what's even harder is maintaining the PR in the top 8 and being so good at the thing you do, you can transfer your knowledge to other players, otherwise known as coaching. Like, learning yourself in the beginning to hit delight recovery on guns is pretty hard, at least if you're me and you're still platinum, but teaching that to someone else can be even more challenging. Now take that all the way to the pro level where they're thinking about spacing, timing, matchups, players, mindsets, and being able to transfer that to another player who's also thinking about their own version of spacing, timings, combos, and character knowledge. But before you can teach someone else, first you gotta learn it for yourself. And then you'll get so good at the game, you start playing Lord Vrax in tournament, which I, I don't even know how he got to that point. But I gotta be honest, Stingray from the very beginning was a pretty unique player. Something that's pretty unique about Brahala pros in general is they like to keep to themselves. You don't really see them streaming, they're not the best at communication. Trust me on this one, I'm the person that has to try and reach out to them. And coaching is just kind of an illusion. Huh? Do you get it? Because Stinger's first org was called Illusion, and he does a lot of coaching. You know what? Okay, I, I'm sorry, sorry. The reason I call coaching kind of an illusion in Brawlhalla is because most of the time it's behind a paywall, and it's not gonna be like a professionally taught course. It's just someone a lot better than you telling you what you're doing wrong that you may have been able to figure out if you looked at your own VOD reviews. It's very rare someone has the natural talent to not only teach other people, but most of the time it's from someone already retired the scene that they were pro in and not currently competing at the top level. Stingray was consistently keeping in the top eight during an era where anyone can compete due to the online access. And soon we'd start to see the players he was coaching break into the top eight as well. But that almost never happened because of the Black Skies document. Disclaimer, it's not actually called the Black Skies document. I just think that sounds really cold and kind of cool. Just like subscribing to this channel. Okay, sorry, back to the document. How did this detailed report on toxicity in Europe ever end up affecting Stingray? And you may be thinking, people write about BS drama all the time. No way this actually got people banned, right? Wrong. This is the same document that got the best player in all of Europe banned for two years. I mean, there's certain people you just don't want to mess with because they will hunt you down if something goes wrong. Only thing is, Stingray didn't do anything wrong. He just didn't agree at one point with the guy who made the document, Daiku, in the past about Brawlhalla. But shortly after that disagreement, the Black Skies document was released. So, no big deal, right? Oh, no. Okay, here is where things get dicey. Yes, Stingray once called Daiku delusional, but not about these certain words I can't say because of monetizational reasons. It was unrelated, it was about Brahala. Regardless, a well put together twit longer nearly put Stingray in risk of getting banned. Not only just Stingray, but Pierre and Impala as well. You may recognize these names, as one of them literally took home the prize as the best in the world, and the other one has been competing for years and took home second at the 
Autumn Seasonal Championship, which I consider to be the hardest, in, in my opinion. Now, Stingray and Impala have never been banned. Pierre, unfortunately, later on did get banned by association of people who interacted with the same sensitive topics. So, if there's anything I would have to say to you, do not interact with these same sensitive topics if you don't want to be banned. All in all, what you need to know is that this dimmed the spotlight on Stingray during his come up and would be something that affected his career from here on out. You will not hear of much interaction between Brahalla and Stingray as they didn't mix much. There's no interviews, no road to BCXs, and certainly not a Spitfire with Sparky, which is my dream to go on one day, so hopefully I can do that. It's not clear as to why this is, but I do think it negatively impacted his rise and somewhat silenced Stingray, which is funny because after this incident, one of the players Stingray coached would soon be all you heard about. A down sink. Oh. Anything could do it. He jumps oh to recovery. Oh my gosh. He steered too far to the left. He couldn't pick it up. Stop side air. He goes off screen. Oh. No recovery. Down sink. And Cody Travis is going to be the North American Brahalla World Champion. Going from your first top eight to second at the World Championship is incredibly rare. And you saw the way Java played too. That is what made him so well thought of. He didn't need to be doing half the things he did, but because he knew he could get away with it, Java always delivered on being way over the top. And just like with Stingray taking spear and showing just how versatile a basic weapon can be, Java took an already developed weapon and showed us just how much crazier it can get. Especially with Java's offstage shenanigans. Like look at this dare, right? It's a recovery into dare bouncing off the bottom of the stage into another recovery. I mean, come on, how could you not like this guy? Another thing that made him cool as a side note, for whatever reason, Java and the class he came up with, as in Luna, Snowy, Megdi, all those guys, for whatever reason, as soon as they hit top eight, they just invested it in the clothing. The Evangelion shirt is iconic with me now, and for whatever reason, I guess if you want to hit PR top eight, you gotta wear anime clothing. I don't know, I just kind of noticed that out, thought it was cool. Java's first, technically speaking, top eight was with Stingray. You may recognize a few other infamous names here. And even then, Java was not the first person Stingray helped with coaching to reach the top eight. But I did want to share with you all how he started coaching Java. Okay, turns out production could only afford one chair, but we're just going to get into it. So how did you start coaching and when did Java come into that? I think I just like talking about the game a lot. So it kind of just happened. It just kind of became a habit of like helping people because I just enjoyed talking about the game that much. Then I was like, okay, I'm actually pretty good at like teaching people. And then I started like, when I, I got bored and I was like, let me see if I can like make a bunch of people some goats. And after that, I think Java asked me a question about the game. And then he asked if I was doing coaching. And then once I was, I told him and then he bought my coaching. And then uh, I basically just like kept him around because he was cool. So I just kept helping him. I was kind of like, it's like personal trainer. Really guys, only one chair? We couldn't even get the guest an actual chair. It was a wooden stool. Anyways, while Java is the Hammer King, you may remember at BCX this year, he didn't actually use Hammer, but instead went with Ember. That's because there was hammer nerfs midway through the year, which pretty much gutted the weapon to a state that was unrecognizable of what it previously represented, which left Java only with a limited amount of time to retrain on a new character. And he's still top aided at the most stacked BCX ever. And while Java is one of the most known players Stingray has coached, his achievements would arguably be overshadowed by another player who worked with Stingray. for game number two and I hope in this game Impala would be the first pro Stingray coached and clearly it paid off. 
Impala, Pierre, and Stingray ran a tight group as pro players, but out of the three, Impala was always at the lower end. That was until BCX. Pierre got out at a surprising 33rd on the first day, but Stingray and Impala remained. And I specifically remember asking Stingray the next day how he felt, and he said the only person I don't want to face is Impala. And I can't describe well enough to you the gap it seemed Impala had on his opponents when he was playing ahead. It's like, all you gotta do is not jump into that bird, but they kept jumping into the freaking bird. Not only that, but Impala's movement was fluid and clean, like it's satisfying to watch and hard to gauge what would happen next. But as I say that, him facing Godly almost seemed scripted. I swear, all this stuff has to be scripted because Godly that year won every single tournament he entered except one. The one tournament where Akno played Kaya in Grand Finals and it seems like this specific legend was the only one that could break Godly's dominance. This is the same guy who in Grand Finals could basically make a highlight reel out of his opponents being taken apart by a girl with an owl and an ice mammoth. Impala would go on to win all of BCX taking down America's best player and Europe's best player as he was just miles ahead of everyone and thank god because we no longer had all might to protect us and endeavor wasn't looking too hot and yes i legitimately think that's the best way to describe stan storm and luna but nobody's ready to hear the truth anyways at bcx it wasn't just the people who stingray coached that did well stingray would also make his way into the top eight to face the person that was there from the very beginning this match was incredibly close the entire way through with multiple reverses and a few self destructs and set the bar for how exciting and close a match could be, or at least that's what everyone had thought. It was commonly thought that Axe countered Lance, and seeing as how Kaina had been playing different legends all tournament, Zol was definitely a predetermined pick for if he had to face a Lance player. And while you can debate whether Axe does counter Lance or not, the truth is, Stingray has always been known for his spear, putting a fatal flaw to this technique and counter pick. But this isn't to say that the matches weren't insanely close. The main saving grace for Stingray is that he seemed to develop a technique of his own. The spear down sig on Orion, I guess has just been overlooked for too long. And he was on a mission to let people know this move was broken. I do think sadly, he knew displaying how overpowered it was on the main stage would end up getting the move nerfed. But I mean, it's the world championship. It's kind of worth it. And as things went on, the down signature came out more and more but Kaina always kept a lead over Stingray. That would be, of course, until Stingray reached the last stock of his matches. For whatever reason then, he was just untouchable. All right, is this the end of the Black Knight? Or will he be able to put the helmet back on, tuck in that armor, and bring this to another game as that is almost enough to find the KO a down take in the near future, potentially. And there it is, but oh. it's a bit too obvious. I think we all yeah. saw that one coming. Oh, but the second one. Gets it there, goes to the delay, and Kaina switches over the axe. He's looking for a down air side. Air, down to hit and stay doing such a great job of mitigating the damage. Finally, a nair is going to connect up in stocks. Stingray goes for the weapon, go forward with the sideline nair. Oh. Now, like that. Oh, that means that Stingray's now in the oh. danger zone. Goes for the ground pound, and Stingray responds with a serve his own. Can he get the stock here? I think he needs to. Go, Can he get this corner? He goes all the way down. Ah, he gets the pound. The way is all he needs oh. to get the KO. Doesn't get it there. That was an opportunity. Stingray that knows what his win condition is, he and he's going the for it. He wants it so bad. He's betting it all! He's betting it all! Can he do it? Can he stop Kaina? Or will Kaina close his dreams out here? And Stingray! Stingray! He's so goddamn clutch! Another thing, as a fun fact, Stingray wasn't even using keyboard and mouse. He's a keyboard and mouse player and had to go to keyboard binds and he still got fourth in the world, not playing how he usually does. So in the end, that's Java at seventh, Stingray at fourth, and Impala at first for a combined total of $76,000, which is probably worth whatever the original coaching cost was. So I guess if you wanna be the next world champion, hit up Stingray and your time is running out. Turns out while everything was going on with Brahalla, Stingray is also a really talented musician and an artist who is going to college. So that also tells me that he did all of this during high school, which is pretty good compared to me playing 
playing League of Legends most of the day, but it will mean we may not see the same level of competition continue for him. However, don't let that get your hopes down. He's pretty known for not caring and then somehow being PR number two at the end of the year. Hey there. It's me, Vonike. I hope you really enjoyed this video about Stingray and how he basically took from being alone in the top eight PR to surrounded by new competitors that he also knows. If you liked the video, stick around and subscribe, all that, join the Discord, or just leave a comment. All are appreciated, and I try to respond to all of them. And for more future uploads, stick around. I'll be back to cover the winters next week, like the king has returned, the god of brawl has returned, some title like that because Sandstorm played in it. But I'm going to keep this outro short. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, go outside at least once, drink water at least twice. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. I, like, okay, so back then I was like 17th place. So I would get 17th every tournament. And I was like, okay, I'm going to top eight this time. And then I think I post on Twitter, I'm going to get top eight this time. And then all like the pros clown me. They were all like, "Oh, bro, like you're not gonna get top eight. And then I I got thirty third, lost to Wing Shell.